Yum, yum! I've made some improvements to Uberball version 2. The first being that it now loads as a kit, which makes it a lot more convenient to use. So in order to load the Uberball scene, what you now do is locate the white Uberball icon in your Modo Modes toolbar. If you're using Modo 10 or Modo 902, you can click on the icon and it will bring up this little popover. So just uh, click on either the Uberball scene or the custom mesh scene, which I'll talk about in a minute. And at that point, you're ready to go. You'll need to save the scene because it's going to load it as a new scene. If you're using Modo 11, the workflow is very similar, except that when you press on the white icon, it's going to bring up a preset browser. So simply double click on one of the scenes that you want to use and you're ready to go. So the master Uberball scenes are actually saved as LXT files, which are Modo template files, which you can't overwrite. So that's just a safety precaution so that you can't actually mess up the original template. So this means that whenever you load one of the Uberball scenes from your preset browser, you're going to need to save it as a new file so you can start working. And that kind of makes sense because you want to have a new file every time you create a new material or a new shader. So what is the custom mesh scene? Well, the idea behind that is to have a scene where you can bring in your own models and do your shading and texturing directly on them rather than on the shadable or one of its variants. So when the custom scene comes in, it just has a placeholder mesh in there. But obviously, that's not what you're going to use. You're going to either hide it or delete it, which is why I've named it Delete Me. So to demonstrate how it actually works, I am going to go to a scene where I've got an existing mesh, which is the camera that I've used in my texturing tutorial. And I'm just going to grab the entire thing and drag it onto that blue locator. It says drop your item here. And we're going to bring in children and shaders because we want to bring in the whole mesh, all its parts. And obviously I want to bring in the existing materials. What I now need to do is to adjust my camera so that I can fit the mesh into my camera view. So let me just quickly make inactive meshes the same as active meshes, just so I can see what I'm doing more clearly. What you have here is a couple of controls. So first of all, you'll see that if I actually zoom and pan around my camera view, that my control locators stay where they should, they reposition themselves to match my view. That's because they're simply parented to the camera. So let me just uh, adjust my view until I'm relatively happy with it. And then I'll demonstrate the controls. So let's run preview and have a look at some of the controls that you have available to you in the Uberball scene. So just as with the main Uberball scene, you have 12 different environments that you can choose from. There's a studio environment and there's also a mixture of interior and exterior environments. And all of these environments can be rotated, which obviously changes the lighting in your scene rather drastically. You can also control the overall saturation. So for example, if you want to have a more neutral environment to work in, simply turn the saturation down to zero. Or if you want the more natural lighting provided by the HDR, turn it back to 100. You can also increase or decrease the brightness of every single one of these environments. I'm going to go back to environment number two, which happens to be my favorite. And I'll show you what the other controls do. The green locator is a focal length control, and that simply allows you to zoom out or to zoom in. So if you want to see your textures more closely, simply zoom in and that will give you a close up view. And then once you're done, you can zoom back out to the default value of 50. So as you can see, Uberball provides a really nice environment for you to do your shading and texturing in. And it allows you to test your materials under very different lighting conditions meaning that you're going to end up with more predictable and robust results in production. Now, I'm always trying to find ways to improve Uberball because it's something that I actually use myself almost daily in production. So if you have any ideas or suggestions, don't hesitate to let me know. And thanks very much for watching this video, and I hope that you find Uberball useful.